Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. Column is one of the most important structural member since it is carries the loads of the above floors. So it is the structural engineer's responsibility to design and detail the column properly to make sure that the column will not collapse under the application of lateral forces. So here ductile detailing plays a major important role to prevent the column from collapse when it is subjected to lateral forces. In this video, let's discuss in detail about why we have to provide the ductile detailing, what are all the important factors we need to consider in ductile detailing of column as per IS 13920-2016. So without further delay, let's begin now. Let me start off with the ductile detailing. What is ductile detailing and why we are providing this ductile detailing? Ductile detailing helps the structural members to undergo larger deformation but without collapse. So that is the main concept of ductile detailing. It allows the structural member to undergo larger deformation without collapse. So ductile detailing makes sure that structural member may damage up to irreparable damages, but it will not collapse. Next, let's discuss why do we need to do ductile detailing. Ductile detailing we have to provide to increase the ductility of the structure and this is to be provided in earthquake prone areas where we required the structure to undergo larger deformation but the structure should not collapse and it also reduces the risk of brittle failure. It increases the redundancy of the structure. That means there are multiple load paths that can carry the loads in the event of failure. So in that case, the ductile detailing help to increase the redundancy of the structure. Next, let's look into the criteria which we need to use in the ductile detailing of column. First one is size of the column. Second one is longitudinal reinforcement. Third one is transverse reinforcement and then special confining reinforcement. So these criteria we need to consider as per IS 13920-2016. Let's look into the first criteria that is size of the column. In IS 13920-2016, class number 7.1 specifies the geometry of the column. In this class number 7.1.1 has the minimum dimension of the column that shall not be less than 20 dB where db is the diameter of the largest diameter of longitudinal reinforcement bar in the beam passing through or anchoring into the column at joint are 300 mm the minimum dimension of the column shall not be less than these two conditions so according to this class at least 300 mm width of the column that is the minimum dimension of the column we need to provide in case of ductile detail in figure 7 it is given as minimum column width shall be more than 300 mm or 15 db this needs to be 20 db where db is the largest diameter of the longitudinal bar in the beam passing through like you, you can see here the beam is passing through the column so in that beam whichever is the larger diameter that we need to consider and in the other class we have the cross section aspect ratio aspect ratio is the ratio between smaller dimension to the larger dimension so the aspect ratio shall not be less than 0.45. Vertical members of RC building whose cross-section aspect ratio is less than 0.4 shall be designed as per the requirement which is given in the class 9. For example, let's consider the column over here. If you place the column in the x direction, this is your x direction. So here, so here the minimum dimension you have to consider as 20 dB. Here dB is the largest diameter of the beam which is passing through the column so if you consider this x direction in this direction db is the largest diameter which is passing through the column for example if you have the largest diameter of 16 mm bar so you have to multiply that with the 20 so 20 multiplied by 60 we get 320 mm as the minimum size of the column or 300 mm so at least minimum 300 mm width we need to provide but in this case we are getting 320 mm similarly if we place the column in the y direction so this beam and this beam is passing through the column so you have to consider the largest diameter of the longitudinal bar in this beam and then you need to calculate the 20 db next one is aspect ratio let's take the column size of 300 by 600 mm so the aspect ratio has to be the ratio between the shorter dimension to the larger dimension so if you do that 300 by 600 you will get 0.5 
which is greater than 0.45 so in this way you have to check the aspect ratio of the column as per is 13920-2016 next let's look into the longitudinal reinforcement is 13920 In class number 7.3 we have the requirements for longitudinal reinforcement for circular columns we have to use minimum of 6 number of bars and then next splicing of longitudinal bars closed links shall be provided over the entire length over which the longitudinal bars are spliced first let's look into the criteria then later on we will discuss about the lap splicing in detail the spacing of the link shall not be exceed 100 mm the lamp length shall not be less than the development length of the largest longitudinal reinforcement bar in tension lap splices shall be provided only in the center half of clear column height and it is not to be provided within a joint or within a distance of 2d from the face of the beam next one is not more than 50% of area of steel bar shall be spliced at lap splices shall not be used for bars of diameter larger than 32 mm if we have to use the bars more than 32 mm in that we have to use mechanical splicing that is mechanical coupling the dates look into the splice in this column see here the column is spliced at the center half of the column because we have to provide the splicing of bars where the bending moment is less the bending moment will be less in the center of the column so we have to splice the bar over here because by splicing the load will transfer from one bar to another bar that is why we have to provide the splicing where the bending moment is less as we have discussed before the spacing of the link shall not exceed 100 mm so you can look into it the splices are provided in the center half and it is not provided within the joint or not provided within a distance of 2d from the face of the beam and also there is one more condition that is not more than 50% of the area of steel bar shall be spliced at one section and if we use the diameter of the bar more than 32 mm in that case we have to go with the mechanical splicing or mechanical couplers next let's look into the transverse reinforcement the criteria for transverse reinforcement is given in class number 7.4 we provide transverse reinforcement in the form of spiral or circular links in circular columns and rectangular link in rectangular columns mainly we provide this transverse reinforcement to hold the longitudinal reinforcement bar in position and also to resist the shear force in both circular and rectangular column the closed link shall have 135 degree hook end with many with an extension of 6 times the diameter but not less than 65 mm when the diameter of longitudinal bar is less than or equal to 32 mm in that case we have to use 8 mm dia bar if it is more than 32 mm we have to go for the 10 mm dia for the transverse reinforcement the maximum spacing of parallel legs of link shall be 300 mm center to center we have to provide the cross ties if the length of any side of link link exceed 300 mm let's look into the figure 10b the cross tie shall be placed perpendicular to the link whose length exceed 300 mm and the consecutive cross ties engaging the same longitudinal bar shall have their 90 degree hook on opposite sides of the in figure till we have the transverse reinforcement details length of the hook is 6 times the diameter it should be more than 65 mm and 135 degree angle has to be provided if you look into the cross tie this looks like this it has to connect the longitudinal bars and then this kind of hooks has to be provided and next if the distance between the parallel legs of the ties is more than 300 mm then we have to provide a cross tie so now the distance between the parallel legs of the ties will be less than 300 mm so this condition has to be satisfied next here we can see the consecutive cross ties engaging the same longitudinal bar have their 90 degree hooks on opposite sides of the column here we have the hooks on the opposite sides of the column if you look into this tie arrangement it looks like this we have one lateral tie which is covering all the outer bar and then inside this is covering these two bar so that is this cross tie and again we have one more cross tie here that is this one and again in the middle we have one cross tie that looks like this next let's look into the special confining reinforcement that is given in class number 8.1 it has to be provided over a length of l not from the face of the joint towards the mid span of the beam 
and mid height of columns on either side of the joint. As you can see, the special confinement bars are provided over here. So this L naught shall not be less than the larger dimension of the member at the section where yielding occurs. 1 sixth of the clear span of the member are 450 mm. For example, if we have the larger lateral dimension of the column as 600 mm, so L naught shall not be less than 600 mm or 1 by 6th of the clear span of the member. For example, if we have the clear span as 3000 mm, 3000 divided by 6, that is 500 mm or 450 mm. So L naught shall not be less than 600 mm, 500 mm or 4, 450 mm. So let's consider the minimum value. So it shall not be less than 450 mm. Next one is spacing shall not be more than one fourth of the minimum dimension of the beam or column, six times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal reinforcement bar and 100 mm link. For example, if we consider the width, and width of beam and column as 300 mm, 300 divided by 4 that is 75 mm. That is 75 mm. So we have to provide that much spacing or six times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal reinforcement bar. If we provide the smallest reinforcement bar as 12 mm, then six times 12 it is 72. So anyway, all the values are coming close to 100 mm. So let's consider the 100 mm link. So the spacing shall not exceed 100 mm as like the spacing we have to provide for splicing of bars. So friends, I hope this video was useful for you. Please do comment in the comment box. Your comments are always welcome. And if you really like the content, hit the like button and also share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.